The city of Kalamunda would like to acknowledge their church colonists. Oh, the Dutch are people, and we pay our respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging. If I can just remind everyone, if you're not speaking at the moment, it's a really good idea just to mute yourself and then you can just unmute yourself. So you just click the little microphone and it helps to make sure there's not a lot of feedback on the line. All right, in terms of the overview for today, we are going to do an icebreaker activity this morning. I'm going to run through a couple of the house rules for our online session. We will have the presentation from Robert Day. There'll be a series of workshop questions. Um, and then there'll also be a poll and we'll, un we'll go through the next steps, but there'll also be an opportunity at the end for um, some general chat. So um, for you guys to share any thoughts and ask any extra questions that you may have. Um, so first of all, if you have uh, jumped on to www.menti.com and popped in that code 3307.59, we would love to hear how you're feeling today. So you can just leave us one or two words. This is just to test that um, Menti's working really nice and easy for you. Awesome. Brilliant. So I can see we've got a few people there who have used it. It's really quite nice to use, as I think you can probably uh, see. Um, so we'll ask some of the questions using Menti today. As noted, if you don't have um, the technology or if you're not too comfortable, um, at any point you can also speak to us um, and you can ensure that you... Um, that you just let us know if you've got any questions in the chat. A bit cold, yeah, it's pretty wet out there, isn't it? We've certainly been getting some good amounts of rain in the city of Kalamunda and I'm hearing we could get up to about another 50 mils today. <laughs> awesome, all righty. We're going to move along because that really was just a bit of an opportunity um, for everyone to test out using Menti. Um, it's good to see that people are happy. Um, they're good. They're great. They're excited for the weekend. Um, and we're seeing a good number of submissions there. You'll also notice on the Menti that um, it'll follow along with the presentation. So you can actually see everything on on that screen um, as well, but it is predominantly for when um, you want to make some comments on some of the different questions. Guys, I can see in the chat that Faisal is still having trouble uh, hearing. Um, Kevin or Kat, can you give Faisal a bit of a hand to see it? Maybe a setting because it sounds like everyone else is, is doing okay. Awesome, thanks Stuart in the chat letting us know that he is good. All right, so I'm going to run through a couple of house rules today that will be really important. The first one I have mentioned is if you could mute your mic when you're not speaking, because we've got a large number of people um, all on the call, it's no different to when you're in a community meeting. If everyone goes to speak at the same time, uh, it actually makes it a little bit difficult. So you'll see you'll have a little raised hand uh, function down at the bottom you can let us know then and then I can kind of say you know Stuart I can see you've got your hand up have you got a question and it just helps to make sure that everyone's not speaking at the same time you can also put any of your questions into the chat and I'll actually verbalize them for you for everyone else that's on the call so that everyone can hear it whether they're looking at the chat or not so it really is quite interactive. There's a number of different ways that you can give uh, feedback. We do ask for one person to speak at a time. Um, and of course, you can use the chat function if you don't have a mic. So we're conscious there might be a couple of you out there who 
um, can hear because you've got your speakers, but you may not have a microphone. So that's totally fine. Use the chat, use Menti, um, and we'll make sure that we verbalize any of your questions or thoughts for you. Alrighty, so at this point, I'm actually gonna hand over to Dan Pierce, who I know a number of you um, have know quite well. Dan is obviously one of the senior partners of Robert's Day. Dan, can I introduce you from here? Thank you. Thanks, Nicole, and welcome everybody to this session. I'm sure one of the, um, the saving graces, perhaps, of the current moment we're in is that we can actually not have to go out into the weather to attend something like this. Thanks for so many people logging on to have a chat. Um, I know that a lot of you guys have been um, close to the process since we started in December. Um, so what I wanted to do today was to probably leave as much time as possible for people to provide feedback and to ask questions and for us to have an opportunity maybe to clarify different things. Um, I hope you've all had an opportunity to go to the Engage Calamunda website to have a look at the concept plan. I know from some feedback I've been receiving, there do appear to be um, a number of things that you know people are querying and matters that um, you know do need some clarification. So let's use this session today productively to try to answer a few of those questions. What I'll do is I'll go through this presentation and I'll endeavour to keep it um, relatively brief. During the Q&A session, perhaps one of the things that we can do is if there's a particular slide that you've seen that you want to circle back around on and talk to, um, let's just let Nicole know and then we can go back to that and we can talk to it. Um, I'll step you through the material that we've got now and then, like I said, I think we can come back around and interrogate some of these slides as we go if we need to. So. Look, the, the starting point, obviously, um, our, our appointment in December of last year was to execute the council resolution. And obviously, a lot of you are familiar with that. Um, there were sort of five key elements that we were asked to take a look at and to try to capture within the concept plan that's been prepared. Um, what I might say, though, is that, you know, the concept plan is, is a, a high level structuring plan. Um, it's not intended to be determinative, but it's equally important that the principles and some of the proposed initiatives uh, understood to work hand in glove with it. Um, they require, for, there is a, a lot of further work needs to be done if those kind of initiatives are the things that the community wants to see, but it's important to understand that those things need to be read in conjunction. Um, so look, having a look at what council asked us to do, evidently, exclusion of general and light industrial was a, was a key element which has been reflected in the plan that has been developed. The reflecting of the existing lifestyle and recreational opportunities was obviously another key one to make sure that we understood the character of the place and those elements that needed to be retained. Um, a mixture of different residential densities which the subtext to which is like obviously contingent on the qualities of the different parts of the precinct in response to the environmental factors and a range of other servicing considerations. Ensuring that both the existing commercial development that's occurring along Walshpool Road East um, is has an opportunity to continue, but also that there are opportunities appropriate to the kind of character and future development in Wattle Grove that um, are able to be incorporated into the plan and importantly, the development of principles that enable that to occur in a way that doesn't impact on people's amenity. Uh, and then another element, which I think, you know, from different, different perspectives um, has more or less traction, but the idea that, you know, we need to respond to the environmental attributes of the site um, and to look at opportunities to both retain and, and if possible with other constraints like bushfire and things to um, actually increase the amount of tree canopy cover and amenity that is provided within the area. Um, obviously a balance needs to be struck there. Thanks, Nick. Uh, and also the consideration of tourism development opportunities just to make sure that those are able to be accommodated if that is something that the community would like to see. Um, 
bit more difficult to do at a concept plan level, but also the idea that we would have regard for the sort of sustainable housing design um, and living principles, which the concept plan does talk to in some detail. Now, for those of you who are new um, and haven't haven't been aware, I mean, this process has been occurring since December. And so very quickly to touch off on what we, the journey we've been on, there was a survey, initial survey in December, just to touch base with the community and for us to get a bit of a register of sentiment. Um, in late January, we had a couple of round table sessions with um, EcoVision and with Future Wattle Grove, just as a bit of a heart starter to understand the perspective from those two representative groups. I appreciate they don't represent everybody, but um, as they did have quite a large respective membership, it was important to sort of get the, the view of the world from both of them. Um, we went on in that process to then proceed with a large community workshop where we endeavoured to tease out the kind of vision and values that people wanted to see for the area um, in February. And then that was those ideas were captured um, into a series of values and principles which are now reflected in the concept plan and which we went on to test at a couple of co-design workshops. Um, now, they have basically informed the design uh, and informed the sort of suite of initiatives that we're suggesting might be appropriate to try to um, implement that. And that is what is out for public comment. The important thing now is that along with this session and with people's opportunity to review the material is this is the first time I think that a more rigorous plan has been applied over the area. And I know that people have different views on it. But it's very important as part of this process, this is not set in stone. This is um, an engagement process and we really need for this to work, for people to provide their feedback at both an individual level um, and how, how it may or may not affect them and their views on it. So this process is only gonna be as good as the kind of feedback that we get from the community. We certainly don't um, suggest that we get everything right, but what we are endeavouring to do is to reflect the feedback because in this particular instance, Council said go out um, and get the view of the community and try to reflect that in a plan that achieves those other objectives that we touched on. So this is our first pass, but the feedback of the community is the thing that is going to define the form that this finally takes and which is put to Council for consideration. Um, we can touch on the process from here at the end of the presentation, but essentially at the end of this consultation period through to uh, mid-June, um, we will modify the concept plan and the supporting documents to accord with the feedback that's received. And then that would be presented to Council in July and then Council will form a view as to how they want to proceed. Thanks, Nick. You can just move on. So look, what I'll just quickly do, I'll um, just quickly step through the five sort of key principles and just read them to you because that will inform um, some of the other material that, that follows on from here. So Nick, if you could move to the living landscape one. The development of the concept plan is very much sort of reflects these high level approaches which were put to the put to the community through the co-design workshops and which I suppose now we are really looking to make sure that these align with the community's values. Um, the key one, the idea of the living landscape certainly touches on Council's request that we have a look at um, the retention and environmental values within the site. And so the plan does endeavour to um, prioritise them where it's appropriate to do so and to suggest a range of measures that will enable us to preserve that kind of natural amenity that adds so much to the character of the place going forward as part of future development, if that is to occur. Thanks, Nick. The other, the other element is, for our perspective, it's obviously a pretty unique place. I mean, it's 20, 20 minutes from the city, um, yet in its current character is quite an exceptional location. Um, the plan does endeavour to identify um, ways that we can be more sensitive to the future development of Wattle Grove um, than might be traditionally accommodated in a typical sort of master plan led development. 
Um, so there's a range of different initiatives um, and things that need to be unpicked and explored that feed into that, which are contained in the document and which I think it's really important that everyone would have a look at and provide comment on. Thanks, Nick. This is probably a key principle and in some respects the way that this proposal differs most from uh, traditional development. Um, evidently what we've got here is a range of different landowners with a lot of private individual properties and a range of different aspirations about um, development timeframes, the type of development that they um, want to see um, and timeframes for when they would like that to occur. The land is also obviously zoned rural. So at the moment, it's not zoned to facilitate any kind of um, intensification, whether it be residential or for any other purpose. Um, and this exercise is really about endeavouring to capture the sentiment of what the community would like to be put forward if rezoning proposals uh, subsequently progressed by either council or by other private individuals to rezone the land under the Metropolitan Region Scheme and the Town Planning Scheme. Um, the approach that we've taken is considering the, the constraints and the number of individual landowners um, has been to create a scenario that enables people to um, undertake organic development under their own auspices and not be um, required to basically have a whole section of the area master planned in a traditional master planning sense that everyone has seen around um, and then to basically be the masters of their own destiny, I suppose, in some respects. Now, what that comes with is considering those other principles that we've already touched on, the kind of principle that we enshrine, and you might move on to the next slide, is the idea that, you know, if you're going to undertake development, you can move on to the next one, Nick, thanks. If you're going to undertake um, development of your private allotment, we're endeavouring to set up some kind of guidelines, controls and suggestions that would enable that to be done where you realise uh, an appropriate level of uplift, if that's what you want to go down, that you respect the wider principles that you're obliged to do through the planning and the environmental planning system, um, and that you are able to, there's positions in place that enable us to control the way that that impacts on people who aren't interested in developing. Now, what we have sort of essentially enshrined in those five principles and what then gets reflected in the plan are probably these four key elements. Um, I know from discussions with people who have contacted me that one of the things that's caused a bit of consternation is the idea of these indicative road alignments and stuff that have been identified on the plan. It's important to understand that one of the things that we've endeavoured to do here, which is basically consistent with good planning practice, is to ensure that we can maximise the level of local connectivity within the area by identifying the opportunities to connect up some of these disconnected roads to enable better pedestrian, cyclist and vehicle movement throughout the area. It's important that it be understood as about facilitating local movement um, because it is difficult to get through and there are like there it's not well served um, typically with good path networks for people to move around. So where you see those indicative road alignments, what they would be considered to be doing is if someone is looking to undertake development of their property, they would have regard for endeavouring to close off some of those connections and, um, well, rather to connect those connections so that it does improve connectivity through the precinct. They're not, um, they're not definitive alignments, but they reflect a best practice that would enable us to improve connectivity throughout. The other key element, obviously, that is picked up in the plan is the oncology. So the ACOM survey um, for the properties that they were able to go on to and to undertake a survey obviously identified a variety of different environmental attributes. Um, so some things that would require, um, even under sort of planning environmental legislation, some form of protection, uh, and then a range of other vegetation that you would just work on the assumption that the community seems to value it. And if it does, finding ways to be able to um, reflect and capture that in future development seems a pretty good aspirational principle. Um, and finding ways that you can augment that as well so that development is actually coming with a net positive restorative outcome um, would certainly be something that we would suggest is worth striving for if it can be achieved. Um, the area is not 
uniform though of course and so there's some areas that don't have any real environmental constraints whatsoever but um, it is certainly a defining attribute of the place and in that regard is something that merits consideration and we've endeavoured to capture it in this plan. Um, consistent with Council's brief we've also looked at areas of existing and potential um, activity so this Wattle Grove is obviously currently utilised for a range of different um, commercial operations that are sort of consistent with its current rural character. Um, for people who are undertaking those uses, they're entitled to continue to undertake them. Um, what we have recommended is if such uses were to be intensified or new uses to come along, that they would um, have regard for the kind of wider principles that we'd be applying to residential development and contribute to that overall character rather than um, remove from it. And the final thing that's worth touching on here is again the instruction to have a look at housing diversity. So what the plan basically does is identifies four different four different zones um, that reflect the existing character um, of each of the precincts. So the area that's identified as the landscape protection zone um, that essentially reflects areas that have um, a really the highest ecological significance and attributes like the river and native vegetation that would be you would be essentially obliged to probably retain um, through any kind of planning process based on um, environmental legislation so those are areas where it's probably unlikely considering existing constraints and not as a result of this plan per se but just through the planning system that um, you would be obliged to probably limit your development opportunities on those kind of sites. The second area is identified as landscape enhancement. And so that's an area where there is still um, environmental values that you probably have to have regard for, um, but where there are opportunities probably to undertake more sensitive developments, we've suggested that those kind of developments might be able to, again, um, perform a bit of a restorative function and actually contribute to the overall character and amenity, both of the future residents and, and current residents. The other, the final two zones are the ones that are probably the least constrained. If I jump onto unconstrained, which is the um, the lightest colour on the concept plan, which actually, Nicole, if you want to move on to the plan, we can actually have a look at these on, on plan would probably be good. Um, do you want to just jump ahead and we'll come back to this? So the unconstrained, the unconstrained areas on the plan um, are the lightest areas off to the left of screen. Um, those are areas where there's no essential ecological values or anything that need to be retained. They're essentially unconstrained with the exception of not having access to um, sewer. Um, and so in the event that that were to be provided, um, you know, then it, it's possible that more intensive development could occur on those. And the areas um, adjacent to them have been identified as landscape transition. Now they similarly have um, a lesser degree of constraint, a lesser degree of environmental um, constraints and other things on them to preclude development, but where you know, we think really managing the interfaces, both with the adjoining landscape enhancement zone um, and any other development in the unconstrained section would probably um, be a really worthwhile initiative. Um, we'll come back to this plan, but Nick, maybe just jump back a few slides the few slides that we've just jumped over and drawing close to the end of the presentation, you'll probably be pleased to hear, um, is just to sort of at a high level, give a bit of a graphic representation of the kind of approach that we think this will lead to. So if you just tab through, Nick. So what this graphic is intended to depict is Wattle Grove is in this foothills environment you know, the surrounding context, particularly to the north in Forestfield and Wattle Grove, Urban Cell 9, um, is a pretty suburban character. But the current foothills environment of Wattle Grove is obviously is zone rural, um, has that rural character, but is identified in all the planning documentation at some future stage to be investigated for urban development. Now, there's um, a variety of constraints in terms of environment servicing and other considerations that would need to be unpicked as part of that process. Um, but, you know, I think there is a, certainly an opportunity through this process to try and define 
the community's vision for what it would like to see in the precinct. So if you tab through, um, What we've sort of been saying throughout this process is that, I mean, if we were to just proceed straight to the urban condition that would be supposed by rezoning to urban, then, okay, I think that what you're going to see is a replication of the kind of suburban development that we see everywhere else. Now, I don't believe that was the brief provided to us by council, um, nor based on the feedback that we received, I think, is that the view of everyone that the whole of Wattle Grove needs to look like everywhere else. And I suppose the plan has really endeavoured to reflect that kind of approach as depicted in the next slide, um, which shows that there's probably a there's probably a transitional point um, between full on suburban development, the existing character of Wattle Grove. Thanks, Nick. Just move on to the next one. The existing character of Wattle Grove and some kind of more transitional arrangement that has respect for both. So it facilitates. Um, some appropriate levels of intensification in the right areas of the site. Um, at the same time, preserves the character as council asked us to take a look at, um, but very much is responsive to the specific landscape character um, and attributes that are in Model Grove and that appear to be what makes people want to come to the area. Um, the plan obviously is depicted there. As I said, it's high level and shouldn't be read, particularly with the road um, alignments and other things to sort of presuppose that that's their location. So some people have said, well, that road goes through a couple of houses. Well, it's not obviously the intention of this plan um, that people, that you're gonna be demolishing any houses, that you're gonna be resuming any land to facilitate any of these initiatives. This is a high level structure that's intended to give context to what the community have been saying to us throughout this process and to respond to the characteristics of the area from a servicing and an environmental perspective. So it's not determinative um, and it doesn't presuppose anything at all. What it does sort of suggest is if you were to undertake development, you know, you'd want to have regard in our view for trying to improve some of the conditions. And if there's intensification to occur, then we think it can be done in a way that's probably more sensitive than traditional suburban development. And that there's a raft of initiatives that are sort of set out in the concept plan supporting documentation that point to some of the initiatives that you might that you might do. Now, it's also important to understand that those need to be rigorously tested. You know, I mean, things that relate to people's, the feasibility of development on people's land need to be properly interrogated. For those of you who are at the co-design workshops, obviously we have um, you know, looked at a few of the ways that that might occur, but that stuff needs to be really rigorously analysed. So you know, within the context of our brief from council, you know, there's only so much that can be done, but you know, we think that there are a range of other things that would need to be looked at um, in more detail by council or others in order to give effect to the kind of aspirations that the community have been saying to us. So I'll probably conclude there. It's just to say and to reiterate that um, this is not a determinative proposal and that it's only going to be as good as the feedback that we get. You know, there are going to be inevitably things that we have got wrong, which we need to know about. And so, I mean, I'd ask everyone in good faith to take a look at it um, and to provide that kind of feedback that enables this plan to be more fine-tuned. As I've said before, the, you know, this proposal, um, you know, is an opportunity for the community to define its agenda for Wattle Grove and Wattle Grove is not homogenous and there's different aspirations and there's different qualities um, to the land there. Um, we're hoping to really fine tune that through this engagement process to make sure that what council is then considering reflects those various aspirations and strikes an appropriate balance between where people want to get to. So I am going to I'm going to leave Dad, it there. Yes, Dad, Nick, go. Oh, sorry, I just had a um, question from Faisal, and I can see that Kevin's jumped in on the chat to let him know, but it was in relation to what it might mean for, or does it mean mixed density? 
Me sorry, do you want to just repeat that question? Mixed density. Does it mean mixed density was the question from Faisal. Okay. And Kevin has advised the concept plan proposes a range of densities or Correct. intensities that respond to the level of environmental constraints. So I just want to share that. Can I ask that yeah. question? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so in terms of the densities, the, the uh, slide that you shown, that it seems to be that it's a mixed density, it has a, some a higher density and then lower density. But in your uh, report, the report that you have released, okay, I was a bit confused in your report by seeing in different places in terms of the uh, density. Uh, okay, for example, uh, the WAPC uh, has, has um, released their proposal beforehand that 15 dwellings yeah. per hectare, yeah. right? And in your report, it has been mentioned in many places that 2,000 square meter. But again, in page number 46, it has been mentioned that uh, 2,000 square meter, but again, one to three dwelling per 2,000 meter square lot. So if it is one to three dwelling per 2,000 meter square lot, that means again, it is 15 dwelling per hectare. Okay, so which is satisfying the WAPC recommendation. So what is your recommendation? Is it 2000 square meter per dwelling or it, it will satisfy again with the WAPC uh, requirement? Okay, I'm happy to talk to that. Was that Faisal, was it? Yes, yes, it's Faisal, Dan. Um, yeah, so look, what we've, essentially what the plan reflects at the moment is the fact that the entire precinct has no connection to sewer. So as a general principle, um, unless sewer was provided, under the government sewerage policy, you can't really have any greater level of intensification than 2,000 square metres. Yeah. Now, that is that is a general principle, like many of these things at this kind of level of planning. So, I mean, there's always going to be um, individual circumstances where, you know, you might find a way to um, go around that particular limitation. And then there's going to be, conversely, circumstances where, you know, constraints mean that you couldn't even get to 2,000 square metres and you might need to have larger. So we have assumed that um, the minimum lot size, considering those current constraints, is going to be 2,000 square metres. But in the future, considering this land needs to be rezoned, this concept plan doesn't give a pathway to subdivision in the absence of rezoning. Um, if you were to resolve some of those constraints, it's possible that you know you could make an application um, to the Planning Commission to try to intensify land more than that. Those four um, different residential zones that we've identified reflect the different levels of constraint. So in our view, like residential zones three and four, the um, transition and the unconstrained zones, um, are probably likely to be able to have greater level of intensification because they have less constraints. Whereas residential landscape, the landscape enhancement zone, residential two, um, will probably have other constraints on there in terms of vegetation and things that mean that it might not be possible to um, get a greater level of intensity in development. Now that is all, as I said, subject to actually some kind of rezoning proposition and future structure planning being put to the Planning Commission, um, which is not part of this process. Um, and as I said, the broader context is if the Commission were just developing this like any other suburban development, then you end up with a sort of general aspiration of 15 dwelling units to hectare. Um, but this proposal does not um, achieve that considering the servicing constraints. I hope that partly answered your question. Uh, to some extent. Uh, because I, I was looking to another one um, for cell line development in other part of the world of growth. I think the, those people who are from the city, they know that for cell line, you have already mentioned which part is um, uh, your R20 or R30 or R40, something like that. But in this mm -hmm. part, it is not yet, I think, finalized which part is what. But in that, right. in that right. sense, because the local stakeholders, I think, would like to know that which part is going to be what. Based on that, they can decide because whether they will go for developing or not, it's completely dependent on the landowner. 
right? Because if you have an overall plan, overall master plan of the area, in that case, people exactly know which part is going to be park, which part is going to be what, even the primary school, which part is going to be. So in that case, there is a, again, a point of compensation that must be given to the landowners. So this, this kind of things are, I think, missing in your report at this moment. Okay, look, that's that's good feedback. I mean, if that's the general view, what one of the interesting things with this exercise has been to strike a balance between the level of detail that gets depicted to make it a meaningful exercise for everyone who's participated without yep. being over determinative. So, you know, we've already got feedback that it's too specific in some areas. Um, mm -hmm. And then similarly feedback that it's um, you know doesn't go far enough. So there isn't. We do need to fine tune it and to strike that right balance. Now, I mean, if the general sentiment is we need to be talking about um, R codes, you know, then that's something that could probably be floated. But even so, it would still be a range, and yeah. that is probably the level of detail that we would be expecting um, to accompany an actual structure plan in the future or an application for this um, precinct or part thereof to be rezoned under the MRS. I mean, it's important to understand this is still high level and we're just trying to touch on, um, yep. capture, the, capture the values as much as possible, but it's good feedback. We'll have a look at it. Yeah. So if you can mention in your report regarding- your different, Yes, in different constraints. Is that okay to talk? Uh, yeah, if you could finish your question and then we're just going to run through a couple of the overarching questions and then open up to the floor at the end of the session. Yes, no, no worries. So if you can just um, discuss a little bit more regarding your business corridor and your inclusive co-living. This I didn't understand what do you mean by this. Um, Dan, can, can I get you to hold that question and let... Sure. Um, Let's look at the vision and then let's get into that detail as we've got into a couple of the exercises, if that's okay. Can you make yep. a note to um, ensure that we discuss that at the end of the session for Faisal? Yes, sure. No worries. Thank you. Excuse Thank you me, so Nicole. I keep putting um, raise my hand on the screen. Thank you, Kathleen. I, I know you've got a question. I can't, Please get go ahead. Into the I can't get into the menti, so I can't put it on. That's okay. So you can okay. um, ask your question in the chat or we're happy for you to verbalise it now. Um, well, Dan said before about the need to um, for rezoning and then, of course, because of Faisal's questions, began to talk about R codes. Now, if we have organic growth and there is no need whatsoever for the zoning to change anything other than rural residential and rural residential being the new transition code for the current special res special rural there is no need with organic growth to change and have anything other than rural residential uh is that a is that a question that you'd like dan to clarify yes or is that, yes yes thank you Sure. Thanks, Kathleen. Look, I think um, even at 2,000 square metres, those kind of lot sizes um, would be considered urban rather than rural residential. But I think the key the key outcome of this process is a determination as to, you know, what a rezoning proposal would ultimately look like to the Planning Commission. Um, you know, the point here, I suppose, is to actually say, well, look, if we've got the settings right for the different parts of the precinct, um, you know, they would then get translated into, you know, planning speak, if you like, like R codes and other things. So, you know, it's possible that elements of the precinct, um, rural residential might be the appropriate designation, but I don't, we haven't really jumped that far ahead. There is an under, there's an underlying question here as well in relation to the rezoning as to who's going to undertake it because council has certainly not committed to undertake a rezoning process. Um, you know, it's always possible that individual landowners might choose to do that. Um, but at this point, the whole question of, of rezoning is something that is yet to be answered. It's not something that we have been asked to provide any answers on where I suppose pointing the way as to what the community is telling us about the way that you know 
land should be developed in the future. And of course, that's what we're hoping you guys are going to say whether or not the settings are right or or not. Thank you, but Dan. If you, so but if you change from rural residential to anything else at all, the environmental protections are no longer there in the same way. So, for example, if you were if you had urban um, trees can be destroyed as long as they plant new trees in appropriate numbers. Whereas if we if it remains rural residential, then there is far more protection for maintaining the area as it is. Isn't yeah, that right? I wouldn't. Yeah, look, I'll, I'll respond to that. That's an important. It's an important point, actually, because look, um, I've seen plenty of rural residential development that is absolutely um, not what I think you have in mind when you're thinking about it. Where um, environmental protections are pretty low, and the and the ultimate result really looks nothing like the Wattle Grove of today. Um, the important part of this whole planning exercise, I think, is the kind of controls that we are advocating that need further exploration to be applied would be intended to try to set an appropriate context for any form of development, whether it's urban or rural residential or whatever, that it's possible for the community and council to decide that there's different settings need to be applied, of course, which need to strike the right balance and need to be, you know, have some detailed investigation but which can start pointing the way to a better result. Because certainly you're right that under the current requirements, um, you know, an urban setting, there's not a ton of controls, except as might be applied by an individual applicant. So that's why the control settings for this proposal are quite important if the community is saying that what they want to see is something different. Dan, can I just pause everyone there? We do have one of the mentee questions up on the screen and the question was asking whether or not those who are on the call today support the vision. Now, the vision got quite a lot of support at the co-design workshop and it was that at Crystal Brook, community and nature come together as a living landscape inspired by its foothill setting. Residents embrace sustainable design and self-sufficiency, a creative and organic approach to growth protects its trees, wildlife and tranquility. Now I can see so far we've had about nine responses. Just before we move on, I just want to check if there's anyone else who does want to provide a response to that question because we are about to go to the next slide. Um, and for those who are, are not supportive of the vision, I'd be really interested to hear, be it in the chat or through your individual submissions, what it is that you, um, that you don't like. So I'll just give about a minute for anyone else to jump on if they would like to and um, advise if they do support that vision or not. And then we're going to move on to the next slide. Um, Nicole, I support that vision, but as I said, I can't get on to the mentee, so I can't respond on there. Thank you just for um, articulating that for us, Kathleen, because it's just about ensuring that we, we do capture the views. So thank you. Is there anybody else who wanted to make any comment on the vision before we move on? Hi, Nick. Can you hear me? I can, Kevin. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd just like to say, Dan, that um, going back to the the workshops, that I had really, I, I agree. I, I came out of those workshops had really high hopes that thought that we were, you know, we, we were getting there. And um, I, I, I just have to say now how disappointed I am and how totally wrong. I think Dan has gotten this, or whoever at Robert's Day, and I want to ask him who these stakeholders are, who, who are they that want these roads? And I know he says they're indicative roads and this and that and the other. We didn't, we, I don't, I've lived and breathed this for three years now. And yep. no one I've spoken to want these roads in since, 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 since this plan, a couple of weeks since this plan's been out. Nobody that I've spoken to so far wants it, and certainly not the area of my my bit in uh, along Walesport Road East. Only this morning I had a lady crying, crying. She said that she was unsure about all of this in the, at the start of it, and I said, "Look, it, it, we'll sort it out." So I feel responsible for these people. But you put these roads in there, 
and, and nobody's been asked. And, and to compound it, you say that the, the stakeholders, that, that, that's where you got the idea for this from the stakeholders. I, I would ask, who are these stakeholders, Dan? Because, yeah, I, mate, you've got that thanks, so Ken. wrong. I'm afraid yeah. that's, that, that's just I, one thing. I do have one other major point, so can I can I leave get, that to a little bit later on. Yeah, Kev, can I get Dan to just talk to... Um, yeah. The roads and how they might kind of evolve or not evolve in the future. But Dan, could you just deal with that? Because I know it is Lots one of the yeah. questions that's came up. And then I'm yeah. going to take a question from Jody because she's got her hand up next. So if I can get your sure. response, Dan. Thanks, Kevin. Look, um, mate, I'm, I'm sorry that you sort of uh, feel a bit of consternation regarding the roads. Look, in relation to who the stakeholders are who have been behind the roads, I mean, that is not, there's not a set of stakeholders there. What we have worked on is the assumption that, you know, people have said to us that they would like to, you know, improve connectivity and improve the path network and all the rest of it. I mean, we could just as easily um, take all of those roads off the plan. I think it would just be less meaningful. Um, but, you know, if the community reckon that, we should just be leaving all the cul-de-sacs in. I mean, personally, I think you do yourself a disservice in the long term, but, you know, it's certainly not the intention of this plan to be saying that, you know, there's going to be a road in this location. I mean, we would be saying in terms of implementation, where, where a road was identified and you wanted to do development, you know, that you would probably try to connect up the road network, um, you know, but it's nothing. Nothing is set in stone, and if this is something where the community is like, we just don't want to see that. Yeah, you know, it, it can yeah. come out. That's the point. Yeah, sure can, 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 I I can I just respond to that? Everybody, for a second, if that's okay. I'm, I would like to respond to that, Nicole. I, I will. Um, okay, I'll allow a really quick response, and then I've got Jody with her hand up as well. But I just want to take from and that. And I've got mine up. And, yeah. Uh, I'll come to you afterwards, Kathleen, okay? Okay. So it's going to be a response from Kev. We're going to go to Jody and then to Kathleen. Thank you very much, yeah. Kev. Uh, thanks, Nicole. Thanks for that, Dan. Um, I, I would just like to say I'm not against this for those people that want it. If they want it at different areas on the scarp and over certain places and, and they want it and they've got a majority of landowners that want that, that's fine. But to, to put all of these indicative roads in where, where people are phoning me up crying that we don't want it, and I'm not, personally I don't want it myself either, but that's, that's the big picture here. The big picture is I've put my hand up when this started to represent so many other people, and, and I feel like I've let them all down. So it is just if a other people want it, if other fine. people want it, that's fine. But, Dan, please get rid of those bloody roads, mate. I, I'm... Please. That's what I can yeah, say. well, can I, look, Nicole, before you move on, I'd just like to say, look, the stuff that gets raised today, Kevin, that kind of stuff, I mean, if the community come back and they say, no, no, you got that bit wrong, this needs to go, this needs to go, this will um, benefit so much more by that um, particular, specific and really granular feedback about what's right and wrong. Um, so we just absolutely must get people to yeah. come back and tell us that's the hard thing then that's that's the hard thing these people don't do fa they don't do zoom meetings these these people hardly even have mobile phones they don't do that's the, okay. this that's is okay. why it's so difficult i am representing these yeah. people and i just ask for you I, i'll prove it in any which way you want me to do i'm, I'm not telling porky pies they've, they've been phoning me they've contacted me and and they're not going to contact you they don't do all this sort of stuff. So you no, no, but that's really why, mate, because, I mean, we're in, a, we're in a public exhibition phase, and, I mean, I'm pretty sure that these people do know how to write a letter, um, and they need to communicate. I mean, you can't – putting it all the onus on you to be um, – to speak for them does them a disservice, and they need to be sending a letter into council and saying, look, I've got some reservations about X, Y, and Z, and really, I mean, that is the point. That has been the way that the planning system works – forever and they've got to engage even if it's not ringing me which would be great um or you know engaging in this kind of online stuff but send a letter capture your thoughts understood yeah. mate and I'll, I'll do it and i'll deliver it to council i will try and get them to do that mate thank you cool. thank you kevin and also fill in the surveys guys and i've got hard copies if anyone needs them get in contact with nick at the city and i will 
deliver, hand deliver hard copies at the survey to anyone who needs it. I want to go over to Jodie. She's had a hand up. Um, Jodie, did you have a question that you had at the moment? Yeah, it's it's not Jody. It's her husband. My question's to Dan, um, and it's again on the road networks. I mean, yes, yes, it's a concept plan. Yes, yes, nothing's fixed. But what you've done by this concept plan is put a blight on everybody's property. From a value point of view, no one can sell their properties now if they want to without acknowledging that this plan exists. Secondly, the roads north, you say there's no stakeholders. The roads north of Crystal Brook Road are mostly going through residential one landscape protection areas, which can't be developed. If they can't be developed, firstly, who's going to pay the contribution for the cost of the roads? Secondly, if you look at those roads, they're all designed to serve as one property, and that's the Amendment 57 property. The road that runs along the boundary of Amendment 57 has got no access to anybody else. There's no land. The road that goes through my neighbour's property is both in landscape protection. It can't be developed. Who's going to access that road? And why is it being yeah. put in other to access the, the potential caravan park land where people are going to store their caravans on Ross Layton's property? Yeah. Fair That's point, what mate. I want to know. I this plan has put a, my friend who's actually at this meeting, his property has been completely blighted by being designated as public open space. Any purchaser that approaches him to buy that, even though this plan is nothing but because you talk of consultation, the only people who got to consult was people that would sit and listen to the others talk at a meeting for three hours. Before these roads were put indicatively on this plan, the council should have spent a few dollar ten stamps and written to people and say, here's what we're planning with the roads. Could you attend the meeting if you disagree with it? There's nothing in this plan that's to the benefit of anyone north of the road yeah. and Thanks, very Rob. little south. It looks like an open slather plan that those that want to develop can develop and everybody else helps pay for it. That's what it looks like to me. From Thanks, valuation Rob, and my perspective. My apologies for calling you um, Jody. It's my um, wife, so it doesn't matter. I'm using her computer. Yeah, no, thank you very much. And thanks for raising those issues. Uh, for Dan, I will say from the city's point of view, there has been a number of letters, but ultimately the idea of today is to release the draft. The survey's out. We really encourage all of you to the survey get is like in. The survey is like your initial survey from Xander. It's got a predetermined outcome with loaded questions. Please Nobody feel free asked, to to us, at the beginning of this Rob. process, what should have been asked is who wants this area to stay rural? Who wants this area to stay what it is? Do a poll, and I'm sure we could have saved $86,000 on Robert's Day's fees. This plan's got no costing. The basic planning principle is someone's got to work out when they draw lines on a map, who's going to pay for them? Absolutely, mate. Absolutely. What you've done is blighted everybody's property without any context. All righty. Thanks for sharing your thoughts, You're welcome. Rob. We've also had a number of comments coming up on the screen in terms of what people um, feel about the concept plan. This question is asking what you like. We're actually going to also ask you what needs to change up next. So I'm just going to give um, one more me, Nicole, I, haven't, I was after, um, I was next in turn to yes, carry yes, on that same I topic. I am getting there. Kathleen, I am getting there. I just want to make sure people know that this is also their last chance before we go to the next question to let us know the things that they like. Um, that slide is going to be up for another minute or two and then I'm going to ask you for the areas of improvement. I'll now go to your question, Kathleen. Okay. Um, for me, it kind of follows on with what has already been said in that Dan spoke about connectivity and that was the purpose of the roads and the paths. First of all, if you're going to have easement type footpaths as similar to the UK um, rural footpaths, they were there before roads even existed. That's why they're there. People who own property hate them. Now, who in their right mind is going to allow an easement on their property to have people walking through? Now, with the connectivity, to me, it seems more like the whole purpose of these roads was not connectivity between streets, more the fact that to zone into smaller lots, 
because of the bowel regulations, you have to have a way in and a way out. Therefore, cul-de-sacs and no-through roads do not allow the same potential for subdivision that roads with two ways in and out have. And to me, the whole thing, connectivity of the area is being used as a reason, but to me, the whole reason for it appears to be that without roads in and out to a street, you cannot have further subdivision. You can only do it with two ways in and out. Yeah. Is that can that I correct? respond to that, Kathleen? Because I think it, it's an important point you raise. I mean, yes, the bushfire regulations require that, but what the plan is endeavouring to do is to set a context for you know the potential for managing growth in an appropriate way in the precinct. So you know if people are going to start intensifying development on their property, it needs to be done within some kind of managed context rather than just as a free for all. If people aren't intending to develop, then obviously you're not going to really need to have any regard for it. I think from the feedback that's been received today, I mean, the elements of this plan, like you do need to approach this in good faith. This is not an exercise that is working to achieve any kind of preconceived idea. What we need to do is if the roads are a thing that is causing everyone real consternation, you know, then they come out of this plan and people would have to work it out at a later point. I mean, this is out for engagement specifically with the view of fine tuning it to reflect the feedback that is received and then putting it to council. And if there's elements in this that are just raising red flags for the community or is not what the community wants to see, then we'll review it. It's as simple as that. Thank you. All righty, guys. I think we're going to have a lot to say on this particular slide and it's actually been where most of the commentary has came from. Gary, I know you've got your hand up and I'll go to you in just a second. Um, if you are on the mentee, if you could let us know what you would like to change. So some of those things that have been discussed around, for example, the road network appears to be um, some really big ones. But in the what they liked, um, we also uh, predominantly saw some comments around things that they that you didn't like. So this really is that spot to tell us the things that you think need to change, because I must note that this is only a draft. This is not something that has been in any way endorsed by council. And the purpose of this exercise and of the survey and of calling for submissions and letters is so that we can get feedback from residents to ensure that Robert's Day have an opportunity to review the concept before it is finalised. Um, Gary, I will go to you now. And in between time, if anyone would like to put up on the screen what they'd like to change. Uh, thank you. Um, I'd just like to talk to you on behalf of uh, the Future Wattle Grove Group, which is uh, 57 property owners within this area. Um, we'd like to say that we do oppose this whole plan in that it does not reflect the property owner's wishes in any way. This concept plan claims that it does, however, have the plans as shown, which do not, with these other restrictions, show at the last workshop, they were already there. We, we didn't have any say in, the, in that outright. We, we actually objected to how that was shown there, and that was over, overruled by what's been shown in this concept plan. Um, when we move on to there, the proposed restrictions, the intent to run roads, corridors, properties require a total minimum of 60 metres of boundary for the roads, because basically you've got a, a nominal 20 metres of road plus 20 metres each side, you're talking a 200 feet wide band as an absolute minimum road resistance. It doesn't matter where they go, that is massive. And, and it creates a big deduction in the value of the property. Now, it's all we find to say that you'll be compensated for a road. Yes, but what's left, the small amount that's left then has to pay for the lot. So the overall picture means that all of the land devalues to the value to suit what's left to be able to pay for it. And that, that's where the problem is with that. Bear in mind that the property owners involved have lived in this area for up to 72 years and that these properties are their investment for their retirement. That's always been their plans. And here we are at this point in time talking about removing the value of it so to a great extent with where all of these roads and, and restrictions and, and uh, planting of extra trees and, and uh, all of the 
area just turning into a, a schmozzle, frankly. Now, the, the say that the, we all had a say was firstly the, the council meeting, um, the original um, meetings showed uh, all of those surveys were all structured that you could not say what you wanted. It was all put down in a wording that did not allow you to say what you really wanted. And in that, on that regard, a lot of these property members that we're talking about were intimidated to the point that they would not go and have anything to say with anything on this in this regard. And basically, it's been left to a few to try and battle the big picture with people coming in from everywhere else in this in the county to tell them what they want on their own on their not what is not their property and has no financial bearing on their property. So that that to me is just incorrect and it's not fair. My, my Thank you, Gary. Can I just plan have a full and rethink in line with the property owner's wishes. Thank you. Thanks very much for sharing um, your thoughts with us there, Gary. Can I also encourage landowners, um, if anybody doesn't like any of the surveys, I know um, there's been various views um, from those who appear to be um, keen to see some development to those all the way at the other end of the spectrum who are not keen to see any change at all that the surveys are leading in one way or another. I'd really encourage residents to just consider sending us an email, writing us a letter, just giving us their blanket thought, a lot like you just did verbally, Gary. We really encourage that at this point. Um, please do write to us, let us know. You don't need to fill in any prescribed form per se. We will take all feedback um as it comes so i just wanted to make that really clear for any of the landowners on the call today or for those of you who are speaking with other landowners the most important thing is that personalized letter or a survey back from each landowner in the in the district at this point now we are about to move on um thank you for everyone who has to what they would yeah. like to change yes dan I was just going to say, I mean, again, to that point, I mean, one of the things that is going to be most valuable in this, Gary, is that we are able to actually um, spatially understand at a really um, individual level the potential impacts that are being proposed here and the views of people. So, I mean, again, it's just so important to feed that into the process because this is still a totally live document. As Nicole said, it has no endorsement by council. Um, it's still a working proposal, and it's the first point in the process where we've endeavoured to synthesise all the material into one thing. There's obviously um, a range of things that need to be reviewed, but we can't do it without people letting us know. Thank you, Dan. We're actually already moving on that ground. Thank you very much. Good idea. All righty, guys. Is there anyone else? Um, we've just had one more comment on the menti or one more lot of comments. Um, is there anyone else at this point that would like to raise an item to change? I know we're slightly over time, but if everyone's comfortable, we actually do want to continue because um, we feel like the most important thing is to, to have these discussions. Um, if there's anyone else who still needs a bit more time on the mentee, let me know, otherwise I'll move on. And Kathleen, if you've got a question, you can fire away. Um, mine is for the mentee, and I think it was um, a rural hub is not what people need. Everyone said repeatedly at that workshop, we have in Kelvin Road, we have the caravan park. At the top of Christabelt Road, we have the BP. They both sell bread, milk, and anything else you might need. We have shopping centres within minutes, Sanderson Road, Edinburgh Road. We have plenty of shops and um, as far as I'm aware, and I did raise this at that workshop and was told, well, yes, that's true, but it doesn't really matter. There's ways around it. But uh, any kind of um, commerce centre, shops, doctors, whatever it might be, is in state planning to be in the most central point for the maximum number of people to access in the shortest possible time. So in locating this so-called rural hub, but really just, um, that's a misnomer, I think, for 
political reasons, but um, in locating that in the choice location, that is um, not something that complies with state planning, is it? That's for, for us, Lee. Thank you. All righty. Dan, do you want to make any comment there? Um, I do have the next... Yeah, just quickly. I, I, I will just... Uh, look, I will speak to that. I think, um, you know, we talked at length um, about, you know, the need to identify some kind of potential future commercial area in the precinct, which is not to say it'll ever happen. Um, you know, your views on that and the views of others are also, you know, well understood, Kathleen. Um, and I suppose we'll see um, once it goes out, well, it's out to see whether or not that is something that gets progressed or not. Again, point of the exercise. Um, and look, as far as where it goes, you know, planning is an art more than a science and there's guidelines and suggestions about how things work that they need to respect local context. Uh, and I think in this instance, that's what's driven um, that location. But we'll see whether we got it right. Can I just note that I think Kim has been endeavouring to say something for some time. Yes. Thank you. I was just about to go to Kim. I can see she's got her mic on. Kim, can we hand over? to you for any questions? Um, I was just wondering why when in the community consultation, so you're basing your concept plan on that, why it was not done in such a way that there was actual statistics? Like we put the dots on the things, red, green, whatever colour they were, but there is no statistical data. So I don't see how it's valid and how it serves anybody in the community that there is no statistical data because you're you're saying that this is only a draft and that you're going to redo it and then it's going to go to the councillors. There's no... Um, uh, do we get to see it again before it does? Are you going to do something that there's actual statistics? Because I just... I don't think it's valid. And also, just on a side note... Yeah, the roads and the public open space being put on a plan to residents who may not have been able to, well, for everybody, but also for residents who haven't been able to, to attend these things was a pretty shit move. Like, you go on the website to see something and there's public open space on your property. Like, of course, you know, it's going to be upsetting to people. And, Dan, I really don't think that you've taken that on board with people's comments. Uh, you know, I know you're trying your hardest, but, dude, it's a really low, I mean, it's just crap. I mean, and, and you're saying, you know, there's um, those unrestricted building areas. Well, blind Freddy can see where they are. And I think that's yeah. what is annoying people as well. Kevin's got a beautiful place where he's worked so hard to build his business up. Did anybody actually say, hey, Kev, you know, um, best planning practices would probably be to put a road here. No, you left it so that he looked on this thing and sees a bloody road going through his business. My neighbours have got walking trails down their property. You know, like, it was a move. Thank Thanks, you. I do Can need I... to just ask you, sorry, Dan, just before you respond, I just need to remind everybody the session is recorded and the recording will be available. I just need everybody to ensure that... Um, that the language is as, as G-rated as we can keep it, okay? That's um, why I went with that word and not the other ones. Yeah, even that one. I don't know how G-rated everyone's going to think that one is, but I just want to make sure that that we're, we're, we're all aware of that one. It will be a recording available. Yeah. Um, Dan, I will get you to make comment, please. Um, for yeah, that would be good. I wondered if you want to touch on the community engagement report in terms of the statistics from the community engagement um, that then led into your development of your draft as well. Well, look, I'll do I'll, I'll do two things. First, Kim, I mean, thank you for being candid about it. I mean that. The I suppose in putting this plan together, I mean, we have people have put in a lot of time um, in the community to participate in the process. And from our perspective, um, you know, trying to show more rather than less detail seemed, in our view, um, more genuine than what the alternative would be, which would be just a series of blobs that I don't think um, is very uh, respectful of the contributions that people have made. 
Now, the point at which we then start trying to say, well, look, what about this? What about that? I feel that we're sort of obliged in this process to try and put some specifics out there to recognise um, the ideas and contributions that people have made. Now, if that has gone too far, the whole point of the process is that that can be dialed back, right? Um, and it, I take your, your point that, you know, some people um, particularly might look at that, look at this and think, oh, you know what, um, you know, this is a fait accompli that's going to occur. And so, I mean, that that is very unfortunate. I mean, I legitimately mean that. Um, but we can we can dial it back. I just think we've endeavoured to try and show um, show the workings and the thinking behind it as much as possible to make this a more meaningful exercise. Because I'm pretty sure that if we just showed four different colours on a plan, people would say, "Why did you even bother doing it?" But the more specific that we are, we can fine tune specific, but we can't fine tune generic. I just wonder if we need to also. Um just ensure that everyone understands the difference between a, a concept plan and a statutory plan. And I know that, that Kim does and many on the call do because they've been quite involved. But, Dan, I don't know if you want to make any comment on that in terms of the fact that the concept plan carries absolutely no statutory weight. Yeah, look, it doesn't carry statutory weight. But, I mean, the point of trying to get this right and to be, um, to be specific to the appropriate degree that we can, um, is important because if this is adopted by council to sort of reflect um, the vision of the community, it does legitimately need to reflect the views of the community in the different areas over to which it relates, which is why we need everyone to tell us. Um, you know, it may be the council says, you know what, we need to pull back a ton of the detail. And if that's the, if that's the call, that's fine. I mean, we've got no skin in the game in terms of a, a predetermined outcome one way or another. Um, yeah. You know, it's legitimately here to reflect um, what the community are telling us. Thank yeah, you. but you didn't have anything statistically to report back. So you, if you had it done, by the way, I have a vote you, made you could, Yeah, but people raising their hands and putting stickers isn't statistics when you take it. No, to to not. council. So there should have been something in this report that said there was eighty people at this meeting. 25% wanted this or 80% wanted that. That's what it should be. Kim, There's can I just comment on that? Because that kind of thing is usually what you would see in the council report at the end of the draft process. So at the moment, what's out for comment isn't the final report. It's actually the concept plan for feedback. We will be required as officers to actually document each of the stages of engagement um, and what the feedback was. It's why the individual submissions at this point are also so important because that data will all have to go to council. But it, it isn't released at this point because at this point we're still seeking feedback. So I just want to let you know that that will come in the future. And I understand at the moment it's it's proposed for to be ready for July. If I can just ask if anyone else does want to comment on whether they agree with any of these three statements um, before we move to the next question, I'll leave the slide just, up for about... Just one point on that, Dan. You, you do need to bear in mind that those stickers, as such, was wanted, and you, and you were warned of that at the time. There was people there... Yeah, so I, I, yeah. Thank you. Well, that's why I don't... I mean, that's why, you know, in terms of statistics, that is not actually an accurate reflection um, I mean I was there I was witnessing what was occurring that's it's none of none of the stuff that has come out of this has been based on just some a set of numbers the key feedback that is really at this point in respond in response to this plan because people have an opportunity to actually respond to something rather than just share ideas so I mean, so but if, if you we we already have precedent of two thousand square meters within the area, and in our zoning, if we so choose, we could do our block down to two thousand square meters. So then, why, if there is people that want to go ahead and do this, can they not do it? Is it because they don't want to pay for the development? Like, there's nothing about development costs in there. There's nothing. It, no. I'm finding it's it's lacking substance of the real questions that people from all sides have been asking what's the cost are you taking my land why is that here like there needs to be substance on those things and i'm going to yeah. mute myself and hello. <laughs> <laughs>
That's all right. You know, look, it's an important point. I suppose the issue is where we are in the planning process, right? So, I mean, we are yet, I, I think even from this discussion today, it's pretty clear that we are yet far from consensus about what the future of this area looks like. You know, there's some agreement about some elements, but, you know, there's not universal consensus. Um, we are so far away from the point in the planning process where you would be identifying how you make this work because we are yet to determine um, what that future even looks like. So, you know, that kind of stuff does need to be worked out. But I mean, that kind of stuff would get worked out as part of a rezoning or structure planning proposals. Yeah, at the moment, this is not suggesting that, you know, there is going to be any resumption of anything for open space roads or whatever. I mean, this plan is um, predicated on the idea that individuals have a pathway to um, development if that's what they want and that they um, are able to do that in a way that respects the amenity of their neighbours. The, you, and Mitch will jump in here, but you know, as, so far as I'm aware, you could not currently, through the majority of this precinct, re, um, subdivide your land to 2,000 square metres because that is um, essentially an urban density and the minimum lot sizes in the rural zone, which is the vast majority of the precinct, is I think one hectare. Mitch, do you want to just clarify that? Uh, yeah, that's correct. The majority of the area is zoned as special rural, which has a minimum size of one hectare. There is that small portion which is zoned um, R5, which allows for 2,000, but yeah, the majority is minimum of one hectare. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Is there anyone else? I can see we've had one vote on Menti. Is there anyone else who wants to comment on the concept plan and, and let us know whether they agree or they disagree at any varying level in relation to whether or not it includes high residential residents, oh, sorry, high quality residential outcomes, whether it has an appropriate amount of commercial development and whether or not it retains existing vegetation and tree canopy before we move to the next slide. I'm going to leave it up for about another 30 seconds. It's Ian Johnson, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Ian, how are you? Thank you very much. Yes, I'd like to make a comment. Yep. I've never been consulted by council. I'm a major landowner, have been for 44 years. Yep. I have received no emails, no phone calls, no consultation. In my opinion, Robert's Day and council had conspired with Leighton to destroy the property values of the landowners that objected to his development. Now, the fact that this report is on the table, if I want to sell my 10 hectares, 25 acres of land, I'm going to have to tell the intending buyer, in the next 10 or 20 years, this could be public open space. And of course, that kills any sale. This has been a deliberate ploy of Leighton's to pay back the people that opposed his development, putting a road through Rob the Letters property, public open space on mine. Mine's a battle axe block. Why would you, as a planner, put public open space on a battle axe block? And you've destroyed the value of my land, even if this thing doesn't go ahead. So I'm not happy about it, and I will be taking action. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ian, for sharing. Um your views and I'd like to just touch base with you a little bit after the call as well just to ensure um, that we've got all of your details um, because we have as we understand it written to all landowners a number of times over the process so I just want to chat through that with you to ensure that you are aware um, of anything in the I've received, I've, received, I've received nothing no phone call no emails no consultation no sitting down with anybody I haven't been invited. The only thing that has come up in the last week, Rob the letter showed me your letter, and I did get a copy. It's a flyer. Anything that goes to the letterbox can be taken out that easily too. I'm not happy, and my land is not available. People will not be walking over my land. It will not be public open space. It will stay as it is, unless I decide to rezone it. But it's Thank you, Ian. Thank you. Alrighty, we're almost at the end of the session, guys. If you could let us know if you do think the concept plan considers tourism development 
or if it provides for modern and sustainable housing design principles. Um, if anyone's not on Menti and they want to make any comment at this point, we're happy for you to do so. If you are on Menti, please pop in your rating. Nicole? Yes. So um, apart from the, the yourself and city staff that are online, do we have any councillors that have joined in with this? Uh, I would need to confirm for you, Kim. I believe it is, there are representatives from the city on the line and representatives from Robert's Day. Um, and then obviously the item will go to council in the future once all of the feedback and community consultation has been undertaken. Okay, um, so as as far as you're aware, no councillors have taken the opportunity to join in this meeting today? Uh, that's correct. I'm not aware, um, looking in at the registrations, that there are only councillors. We did specifically try to focus on landowners, to be mm -hmm. honest with you, Kim, because... Um, yep. You know, it, we've only done a couple of the Zoom meetings as a bit of an additional opportunity to give feedback along with the surveys and the letters and that type of thing. Um, and we wanted to ensure that um, we kind of kept numbers around the 2025 mark um, with the idea of having additional sessions if we if we needed to. Okay, thank you. No um, problem. Hi, Nicole, you need to go back a screen. You've moved on to the... Um, on the Menti screen, you've moved on to the next screen and you asked if anyone wanted to comment on the previous screen, but then I didn't get a chance to. Oh, apologies, I actually thought that you weren't utilising Menti. I'm not, I can't use it, so I need to put my hand up and speak. Yeah, you can make, any, you can make any comment that you would like to. The screen doesn't need to be okay. Um, up, yeah. Okay. Um, well, I need to go back the previous screen to see exactly what it said. But it said, um, do you agree or disagree that there's uh, sufficient um, commercial development? But in, if you said, um, I disagree, I disagree because you think there should be no commercial development, that could yes. be, you know, it's not a very clear. I worked at the Australian Bureau of Statistics, I think you probably know, for many, many years. And that is not a question that you can actually answer and get an answer out of because um, you can't get a result out of that because you don't know whether the person's saying, no, there should be no commercial development, which is what I believe, or that you think there's not enough. Well, it's asking in relation to the concept plan whether or not you agree or disagree that there is enough in the current concept plan. So we acknowledge that. You could but it doesn't say is there enough. It says, um, if you go back onto that screen, I don't think that's exactly what it said. The concept, concept plan, plan has an has appropriate not... amount. Yeah, yep. so if you disagree with that because yep. you think there should be none, you're not getting that out of... If I answered that, you wouldn't be getting my view on it. I agree with you. Yep. This is what saying... being done with all of the other surveys. They, they double negative it. And you can only answer it one way, which suits it one way only, and you can't exactly. get the Exactly. So in, in any survey, and as I say, I worked to the Australian Bureau of Statistics for many years, in any survey, and we all know it, you word the question in a way that gives you the answer that you want. Thank you, Kathleen. So, if I can comment that we're actually looking to see whether or not you think the draft concept, the only purpose of these questions is to see whether or not the draft concept fits what the original brief was um, and we are expecting from the what you like and you what you don't like to understand the more in depth of how you feel about it along with your submissions so this is about seeing whether or not you fit the brief and it looks like you think there's still some more work 
to be done. So it's not designed to understand the why, it's just to get a bit of a feel. We can understand the why from the number of open-ended questions. And I am gonna move on, because I know we're about half an hour over time, but there is an opportunity, um, for example, to let us know if you've got any other final thoughts in relation to the plan. Nick, I've got another question. Yeah, Kev. I, I don't know whether yourself or Dan may be able to answer that. It sort of goes on what I was saying before about all of my neighbours and about getting them to um, write to the council or whatever. I, I yes. will do that. I, I will try my hardest to do that, but I do know them very well now. Um, I just want to know the significance of uh, the Water, Future Wattle Grove Association. We set all this up so that we could represent these people because we were aware of this problem. Um, yep. I, I, I don't I, know how... Um, can I make a suggestion, Kevin, that if you are looking to put a submission in on behalf of a group, can I suggest that it includes a very clear list of all of the landowners who are represented in that group and that each landowner actually signs that they are supportive of whatever submission that you're putting in. So if you're asking me if you put a submission in as a organisation, um, I would suggest that the way to showcase who that actually uh, is on behalf of is much in the same way as something like a petition where it is listed, the landowners, and they have signed to say that they agree with the contents of that particular submission. Um, and that would go for anyone who was looking to put in a submission that represented more than one group. That is my personal recommendation on giving that strength. That, that's great, Nick. That's, that's that's great. That's what that's what we will do. But if I could just, uh, and again, I know that Robert's day didn't want to hear this and you probably won't want to hear it either. But at the outset of all of this, um, all of this debacle, we had 75% of landowners where I walked the streets, it took me months to get all of their signatures. And I actually attended council, I presented our petition to the front desk, it was signed, I did it with a Mr Lovegrove and a Mr Powell from the garden centre, we all had these petitions of the, exactly like what you've just said, they were never recognised by council in any of the meetings, for what reason, and it will always come back to this. It was never Thanks. been, we've already, we've already done that Nick, so you know, so I, just, I can't do it all again. No, Kevin. So what I'm saying is um, in relation to your submission on the concept plan itself. Um, so that's what's actually being asked for comment. I can go back through if you like and see um, how council noted or otherwise previous petitions. But you were asking me in relation to if you're putting in a submission on behalf of a group. Um, if you're doing that on this current concept plan as a new thing, then my suggestion is that anyone who is a part of that group actually is clearly identified so that the councillors know that these are the landowners that support that particular submission. Um, totally, so I totally get, I totally get what you're saying, but I just don't want to do all this work again. And then I submitted the front desk, get it stamped. I've got it, I've got the, got the date on there, signatures, and then you don't use it again. I, I, it's, it was a massive amount of work that I did and a few others in the group as well to get all of these signatures. Yep. And um, you know, I, I don't want to, I can't go through that again. It's it's just too, it's too much. I mean, we've done it once and, and it was totally ignored by council. I would really appreciate it if you could look into that, Nick, to, um, to, to, to get that acknowledged, our, our original petition. Confirm me, I will do that. And, Thank um, you. and I just need to note that this is a current advertising period. So right now, any submissions that are made during the advertising period will form part of the final community engagement report that will be required to go to council. Yeah. So Nicole, are we gonna get this revised plan sent out to us again before it goes to council or is it just gonna to go to council? Generally speaking, it actually would go up in the agenda of a council report item before the meeting was held. So it would be publicly available before council actually uh, voted on it, Kim. So we run the risk of, example, roads being left through people's properties, then get submitted to council. So we'd have to go into council to talk about it, but we can't because COVID-19 is happening. Uh, so just to confirm in relation to attendance at council, um, 
the city has set up mechanisms to allow for uh, attendance with social distancing and a max of 20 uh, people, but we are also live streaming the meetings and we're also happy to take questions or deputations on matters um, in writing. And in some cases they have been read out where um, someone was unable to attend a recent special council meeting. So when the item's gonna go to council, we're happy to chat with any landowners in relation to their specific circumstances um, and any submissions and the like that they would like to make at the moment. We are still in the draft advertising phase, so we need to get the feedback first. The officers uh, need to review the plan that comes back in from Robert's Day. They need to write a council report then that actually also um, puts forward an officer's recommendation in relation to this matter, which will depend on the feedback that comes in and the plan itself. Um, oh before it will actually go to council. So we've got a little bit of work still to do. Um, sorry, this will be just my last question. Soon there, um, ne next year, the, the WAPC looks at reviewing the plan, whether we're going to be under investigation for urban or not, or they can choose to leave it at the rural zoning. So why are we trying to get this all done before the state government come back with their ruling so this is only concept remember this isn't a statutory process but i don't know mm. if one of the, do one of the planners want to comment on that well i what i would say is that the reason why it's being done now is because of that council directive um that was issued that forms the basis of the brief um you know so they resolved that they would go through a community engagement exercise to try to arrive at a concept plan that puts to bed the idea that the area will be developed for industrial um, and that's the process that we're in but as i said before i mean mitch might want to jump in here but so far as any sort of wider planning initiatives by the city to take this further or to pursue mrs rezonings or anything like that that certainly hasn't been determined um, do you want to elaborate a little bit by what you mean with respect to the commission reviewing um reviewing the I, I presume we're talking about the sub-regional framework which yep. identifies this for urban expansion yep i mean if they're going to if they're going to review that they will have I, I wasn't aware that they were intending to do it for this area i mean they say that they'll be doing that kind of stuff regular reviews quite frequently as to whether or not it would change and i think that will have its own public engagement process which would provide an opportunity for people to say, well, look, you know, maybe it shouldn't be an urban expansion zone. Maybe it should be remain rural or something. Um, so, I mean, there'll be a process associated with that high level planning as well, not just the sort of local considerations that we're involved in at the moment. Yeah, which I think for also from, from your business though, Dan, is the council going to be using your document to submit for when it comes up for review. Uh, yeah. I have to leave. I, that's that's a decision for the um, for the council to make, obviously. But I mean, you know, what I would be hoping is that the kind of feedback that we receive through this period here enables us to actually fine tune and recalibrate the plan so that it's actually consistent with what um, people are telling us in different parts of the precinct. Um, Alrighty, if, guys. If we, that, if we can achieve that, then I mean, I think. Um, the interests of the community are well served through the exercise, but you know, if if we cannot, then council needs to try to form a view based on something. I suppose. Thanks, All right, Dan. I'm going to thank everyone very much um, for that. I know that that takes us to about an hour and thirty five minutes or so into the session. Um, just in terms of next steps, the process is currently open for advertising. Um, we do encourage landowners to ask any questions, um, to give us a call at the City of Kalamunda. You can call us 92579999. Our strategic planners are also happy to um, catch up with landowners, be it either on the phone or perhaps via a, a meeting. Our front counter is open. Um, we do have a limit of the number of people we can have in due to COVID at any one time, but uh, we are open, so all of the normal ways you can get in contact with the city. 
complete a copy of the hard copy survey, complete the feedback on Engage, or write a submission in relation to the things you like, the things you don't like around the draft concept plan so that all of that feedback can be provided to Robert's day. The comments close on the 15th of June, so we've still got a, a couple of weeks that this is open and we encourage you all to make submissions um, and it is expected to go to council in July. However, that is um, subject to, I suppose, the finalisation of the draft concept, which will depend on the feedback that comes in. So um, at this point, I would thank you all very much for your attendance and participation today. Thanks to Dan for sharing um, what it is that Robert's Day have developed as a part of the concept. Um, and I hope that everyone enjoys their long weekend. Yay. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Very good. Thank you. Right. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Have a good weekend. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Have a good weekend. Thank you, guys.